guys, so Jessica over at Foolish Oats tagged me to do the Bookish Beginnings tag and I thought I would get started with that. I thought it was a fun tag to do. Um, so the first question is, tell us about what you loved to read as a child. Um, so there's two things that I loved to read as a child. Um, what got me into reading was horse books. Um, so things like Saddle Club and Thoroughbred and Pony Club and basically if it had horses and young girls, I probably read it. Um, I was one of those horse crazy young people growing up. Um, I did ride horses for like 15 years. Um, I still love horses. It's just a very expensive sport and I would rather buy books. So yes, um, unfortunately I don't ride anymore, though I do still love horses. Um, the other thing is fantasy and I have my beautiful leather bound copy of The Hobbit here. Um, I remember having this being read to me as a child but from my mom. Um, she really struggled with the names though. She hates fantasy lit so the fact that she read this to me when I was younger shows how much she loved me. Um, so yeah I read I read horse books and I read fantasy. Doesn't doesn't you know surprise me. Um, so question number two is what was the first adult fiction you tried to, or want to, read? Um, as I am an adult, it's definitely tried to, and I did succeed. Um, I didn't always fully understand the nuances, um, and that was The Vampire Lestat by Anne Rice. Um, I read these a lot when I was in elementary school, definitely well above my understanding, um, but really, really enjoyed, you know, fantasy and vampires were kind of an extension of that. So these engrossed me when I was in elementary school. Um, another book that I read that was well beyond my understanding was The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. I actually read this for the first time when I was 10. Um, I remember it distinctly because my sister is six years older than me, so we were never in like the same school really at the same time. So she was in high school and she this was one of her required reading texts um, and I picked it up and read it and absolutely loved it. No surprise there, it deals, it's a post-apocalyptic book. You guys know how much I love Wyndham, but this was my first introduction to Wyndham. I didn't actually realize for a very long time. Um, but Wyndham had wrote other books and like just how amazing this book is. So I've reread this quite a few times. Um, and I think my most recent reading, I finally like fully understood the implications because I was always just a little bit too young to be reading this. Um, so that's one of the problems when you're reading well above your level is sometimes you don't fully understand um, what's going on. Like I, I know the first time I read this, I did not get like the nuclear fallout. Um, I didn't fully understand the implications of that as I do as an adult. Um, same with Anne Rice. I didn't get a lot of the homoerotic themes that are present in it, which you know, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, yeah, I just, I didn't pick up with those because I was far too young and didn't understand that kind of thing. Um, question number three is what was the classic book that made you read and not because of school? Um, and that is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. No surprise there. Um, when I was about 20 or so, early, late teens, early 20s, I decided I wanted to become quote unquote well read. I still don't have a definition of what well read is, but I started by reading Jane Austen's bibliography. Um, and yeah, I, I fell in love with Pride and Prejudice. Um, absolutely fantastic. Still think my favorite adaptation is the 2005 Karen Knightley edition. Um, this is making me want to watch that. Um, I generally like to watch it in the fall. So yeah, one of my favorite books. Um, the next question is, Tell us about a book that made you realize a new favorite genre or writing style. And that is Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. It made me realize that I actually really liked gothic literature. Um, I was first introduced by gothic literature, like most people, in high school. Um, I mean, to be fair, I'd been reading Anne Rice for quite a while, but I never really recognized it as gothic. Um, and I was forced to read Wuthering Heights and Jane Eyre, which were ruined because I had awful, awful English teachers in high school. My English department at high school was just absolutely atrocious. Um, it's a wonder I still enjoy reading today. They are that bad. Like, uh, awful. But my friend got me this for my birthday last year and I absolutely fell in love and I started exploring the gothic genre again as an adult. Um, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um... Question number five is what is the first literary prize winner that you read or want to read? Um, I don't own a copy of this anymore because I got rid of it because I actually didn't enjoy it at all and I actually forget the author's name. 
Um, I'm sure I've read other literary prize winners, but this is the one I actually read with the intention because it had won a literary prize, and that is Us Conductors, which won last year's Giller Prize. Um, didn't enjoy it, but I feel like I'm going to continue to read the Giller Prize winners simply because then I'm kind of au courant in Canlit. This, this fulfills my Canlit requirement for the year, is reading the Giller Prize winner. That's, that's, yeah. I'm a bad Canadian. I don't like Canlit. Sorry. Um, but yeah, that was that was the one I read because I, it was a prize winner and I was just like, ah, this, this sucked. Um, yeah, was not a fan. Um, number six is what is the first piece of translated fiction that you read or want to read? Um, I'm not sure because obviously I can't remember everything that I've ever read, but the first one I um, can remember reading is Alexander Dumas. Um, this is a copy of The Black Tulip. The first books of him I read, like by him I read, were the Three Musketeers series. I've read all five books in that, as well as The Black Tulip. I think there's a couple more books um, that I need to read by him. I have read The Count of Monte Cristo as well. Um, there's like George's and Lorraine Margot and a couple others that I need to track down and read. Um, but when I was reading Austin, I decided that Dumas was the next. Um, author I would work my way through and I worked my way through the majority of his bibliography so yes yay Dumas I absolutely adore Alexander Dumas if you have not read him I do actually recommend starting with The Black Tulip I think it's probably one of my favorites that and The Three Musketeers um, I do really enjoy The Count of Monte Cristo but it is a tomb um, and this deals with similar themes I also appreciate this so much more as an adult um, having studied history and having studied Dutch Republic history um, Fun fact, a friend of mine just got back from studying in The Hague and in um, the Netherlands and she's like, I didn't really understand and I could like why the walls were pointed upwards and in a star shape and I could actually explain why. Go historians, go like warfare historians. By the way, it's so cannonballs just kind of ricochet up them. Um, it was a defensive mechanism. So basically the walls kind of come to a point and they point inwards. Um, so yes, if you were ever in the Netherlands at The Hague, that is why the walls are like that. So on to the last question is number seven, and tell us why you started booktube and what it is like to film and upload your first video. Um, I started booktube almost two years ago and I've been watching booktube for quite a while. Um, I watched Sana from Books and Quills and Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts as well as um, Jason from The Heavy Blanks and it was particularly Jean and Jason that kind of inspired me to get started because they didn't just talk about YA and that was something that like I didn't see on YouTube a lot and I felt very underrepresented on YouTube because like well a lot of YouTubers are fantastic and they talk about YA and there's absolutely nothing wrong with reading YA. Um, I just don't. It's not a genre that I'm particularly fond of um, and I, I wanted a chance to discuss genres other than YA and so I started my booktube channel and I named it Ex Libris. So that is actually how you pronounce it is Ex Libris. It is Latin. It stands for from the books. Um, you often find it on book plates um, and yeah I decided to be super pretentious and make, make my username in Latin because that is who I am. Um, and yeah I just I kind of fell in love with booktube. I think my first video was a review of Among the Jainites by, oh I don't even remember who, but it was a book about like Jane Austen obsession and stuff like that. It was a nonfiction book and I really enjoyed it. Um, I had some issues with it so I did a review for it and that was the first video I ever did. Um, it was really nerve-wracking. It took me like three or four times to get the video right. Um, now I have no problem filming and I mean I was so secretive about it because I was so nervous like I didn't let anybody know in my real life that I was like doing booktube. So yeah I you know it happens and I am really glad I took the plunge and did booktube so if you're on the fence about doing booktube do booktube um, so that is the bookish beginnings tag thank you Jessica for tagging me um, basically if you want to do this video do it I don't know who has and who hasn't um, people who I'd like to see do it um, I know Jessica take Jason from the heavy blanks so yes I am taking you again Jason um, I also would love to see uh, Jean from Jean's Bookish Thoughts and Jen Campbell um, 
as well as Mercedes from Mercy's Bookish Musings, uh, Vanessa over at Chbosky, uh, Yamini from the Skeptical Readers Library, I think that's your username, I'm going off the top of my head here, literally just naming people. Um, I know Taylor did it recently, uh, who else, who else, I'm trying to come up with names. Basically if you haven't done it, do it, this is, this is me tagging you, I'm tagging everybody, um, and I will see you guys in another video, bye.